Good Mark Smith here, and today we're going to take a look at a 32 pound book box. A crappy one over here. What I remember is that there was some flatware that I liked. It was mostly in one pattern. I don't know if I liked it that much though. It didn't seem to be a premium pattern or anything like that. But even flatware bought at $2 a pound and being able to sell it at bulk of 4 to $5 a pound is still profit if that's what you desire. If you can find it for cheap enough and you think that I got this box cheap enough. I can't remember exactly how much, but that's a piece. Now, here's the box of what it's looking like right off the bat. I'll show you all. There she is. Not too bad. I like how it looks so far. Got a decent amount of flour on the top. Let's go look for some real silver. You know what? Right here, this is already... This is calling my name. And we're looking at what could be American coin silver. Given the fiddle back. Given the monogram. Rogers made a lot of F.B. Rogers, W. and Rogers, what, 1847 Rogers Bros. They all made fiddleback spoons, but this one seems a little different to me. And this could certainly be 90% coin silver. Idea. Okay, this is really odd because the only marking I can see, it looks like the, the king's portrait. Which is very strange, because it's not like it's marked sterling or anything, but but that would have been the king's portrait that would have been like the import duty. I think is what I'm looking at. Coin silver that's unmarked, because there's no name on or maker on the piece. Now that is bizarre to me. That is so weird. Have to have to ask around because. I want to post this on some kind of silver form, or maybe they can give me insight. But I'm fairly certain that... You know that clink? That's the sound of silver. Silver plate isn't going to clink that hard. You're looking at well-crafted coin silver. Well, of course it's well-crafted because it was coin. It was made of coins before, but... Okay, here's this. This is also silver, but... Okay, this is silver plate. Hmm. Did we learn anything today? I don't think we did. Never mind. Well, it's a little duller. It's a little bit duller. And don't worry, guys. I'm going to make sure to... Tone down the volume so we don't blow out your eardrums. I just want you all to see, feel, feel the difference in the toning. So we've got two silver spoons already, and I saw more in there. So already this is come, turning out to be a fantastic purchase. Now let's go ahead and put the ice on them. I don't know why I'm doing this, because I used to, to love the ice test, because silver is very, very... Very, very thermo, thermo, thermodynamic? I don't know the word, but anyway, it traps heat and cold very fast. So if you put silver in a cold environment or in a hot environment, it'll, it'll uh, get hot or cold faster. I think it's called conductivity, thermal conductivity. And silver is the, the metal with the highest thermal conductivity. And we put the silver or the ice cubes on the silver and the silver plate, you can kind of t feel the, the difference. Like, th they're going to get way fat, way colder, way faster. But I've, I've been kind of straying away from this more and more often because the difference between copper and the difference between silver in how fast it gets cold is a little hard to gauge. They're pretty similar. Copper also has very high thermal conductivity. But we'll go ahead and take a look at this in a few minutes and I'll see whether or not the, um, the coin silver 
um, eats up the the ice faster than the spoon. I mean the the plated fork. Okay, go take a look at the back at the box again, and let's take a look at more more plate uh, flatware. More in this case, more coin silver. Hopefully, hopefully I get lucky. Okay, so we've got presidential spoons. I found plenty of presidential spoons. I haven't tried to sell them yet, but I know that they'll go for about a dollar each. Nice to find. Okay, so this is probably... Okay, this is marked pure, pure coin, guys. Pure coin. So, apparently this is William B. Durgan. Pure coin silver. And it actually goes for a premium over melt, so that's kind of unusual. At least from what I've seen from coin silver. Usually it melts around, uh, it's priced around melt value of the silver, which is very strange to me because this is stuff is history and you're never going to get it back, but apparently they made a lot of coin silver back in the day, so that's why it doesn't go for command huge pre premiums that you would expect, but William B. Durgan was well known and uh, they actually do sell for a premium. This is a very strange because it doesn't seem to sell on eBay, but they're listing it a lot on eBay and they are asking for like $30 for a little spoon like this. It's light and obviously in better shape, the ones that would sell. This one has, has dents in it, but yeah, it's not selling, but people are asking for a chunky price. What that means, I don't understand because you would think that if pe if things aren't selling, people would, would collapse the price down until it sells, but... People are sitting on firm on the prices for these pieces. Take that for what you will. So again, more more coin silver. Quite nice. Okay, so this this is some kind of flatware. We're looking at Art Deco. I think it's Art Deco. From from the pattern. All right, so after a quick little uh, Google search, and it took me a little while because although I can find patterns easier using the replacements finder, um, when I actually look through patterns manually over the internet, it, the pattern will stick in my mind even easier, or at least there's a chance to. But anyway, this is uh, the pattern Sheraton by Omita. Yeah, not a bad one, not a bad one at all, and it seems to be a bit, uh, sell for a bit of a premium over normal, um, community pattern pieces, which I would say usually sell for about a dollar a piece, if that. What are you made around Art Deco time period? This is a community pattern, so hopefully I can figure out what pattern is easily. Okay, well this is a little sterling handled piece. All the sterling is good to find, even the handles. I'm not going to complain about that at all. Stratford Silver Company. A very, very precious and fancy looking ladle. I do enjoy the beauty in the handle here. Stratford was a very beautiful company. They made lovely things. But unfortunately, a lot of the time, their silver was less thickly plated and so a lot of the companies like Stratford their pieces have been lost to time whereas pieces that plated more silver uh, as a whole this one's marked X12 so actually it's marked AX1 AX11 I don't know what that means actually a11. I've seen pieces marked 12 as well. So it has something to do with the thickness, and since 11 is not that much, less than 12, I assume that the pieces were made decently. Hence why it's still around. And here's another. Oh, I have. I know that this, this pattern is rare too. 
W.M. Rogers and Son. I think that this is a the call, pattern they call Victory because I just sold, I just made a listing on this pattern just the other day. Found like 11 pieces and there's not very many of these these pieces around. So I'm asking for five bucks on the 11 I found. It's nice to find more. So just add add to that listing, I guess. So we're looking at. I'll just tear out the. The president pieces get them out of the way. There's quite a few of those. I'll just put them in this own little own little pile here. Here we've got more A A. It looks like this is also Art Deco. Very cool pattern as well. Lucky me. This is uh, the pattern Antoinette. It's also a very lucrative pattern, all things considered, when our base case is $1 a piece. This could go for 7 to 8. Adds up fast when you can find multiple pieces too. As a quick aside, never ever uh, put wrap your flatware in rubber bands. Rubber bands will tarnish the ever-living shit out of your pieces and make them look very ugly because only the, pe the parts that had the band around them will be tarnished. All the rest will be looking okay and it's going to just look so weird and awkward. Public service announcement over. I, I said that the... I didn't think that the flatware was that great of quality. Well, I've got to eat my words because that's not true though. This flower is oh, incredible, actually. They're very good patterns to follow. Okay, so this is all the same pattern over here. I'll just do that to the side. I think that's it for that community pattern. Go take a look at that in a minute. But here I'll separate out another pattern I have. Oh, no, there's more trees. Like, right? no bad. There's another one. Now I'll start picking up this pattern, which is this, the victory pattern. I think it's victory. There's four, four spoons for this victory, victory pattern, four teaspoons. From what I can tell, hey, there's still a bit of flour in there. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at more coin. There is more coin in there. I want to get rid of all of the other stuff first, so I can focus on the coin too. But. Okay, so this is a two-door two door community pattern. There's a decent amount of fit in here. I'm at six spoons from this victory pattern. That's enough to make a listing. Anytime that you guys have six or more pieces of, of a certain pattern, you can, if you'd like, list those separately as a table set or as like six, six or eight pieces. Because a lot of the time, people will, will buy certain pieces of a pattern in groups of six or eight in order to replace their silver um, their silver plated pieces and or to add add to their collection or or pattern that they already have and that that helps because you have six or eight table settings that is on a table so and go ahead and take a look at Sorry, I'm a little bit rushed today because I got something going on later on. But let's go take a look at that. Let's go take a look at the ice again. So here's the ice here. We've got the we've got the coins pieces over here. The ice is a little bit smaller, but not really. Yeah, it's not. You're not seeing too much of a difference. At this point, there's really not too much of a difference in how fast the ice is melting. This is a little bit bigger than the one in the middle, but then this one, the one on the left, is still a little bit big. And the only way I would have been able to do this fairly is if I had if I had weighed all the ice beforehand. But yeah, that's not that's not how it went, huh? But what I will say is that. The plated piece is a lot thicker, so there would have been more metal to contact with 
make contact with this this piece of ice and and there's less metal to make contact with these pieces of ice with the coin silver even then it's the coin silver is probably winning that's a good sign but then again like i said before this flatware pattern this flatware piece on the right side might be plate plated with copper so it's going to be pretty fast so from what i can gauge from this it's likely that these pieces are coin silver it's likely that this is this is silver plated since this bottom is still not that cold but it's not 100% definitive i can't say 100% either way that this is silver and this is plate. Well, this is a marked plate anyway. But it's not for sure. But very likely. As the scientists would say, there's a great chance of these being silver. Based on my test. Okay. Back over here to the flatware again. So I've got a bunch of cheese knives over here. Two makers. One is Argyle. Argyle silver plate. And one is William Rogers. And William Rogers, or W.M. Rogers, as uh, you, you will see more of their work marked as, they originally used Gutenberg cross. I don't know what. It's the German cross over. But the Argyle will be worth some lifting because there's five of it. William Rogers not so much since I only have one one piece of that. So it seems that there are four of these. But these cheese knives by W M Rogers. So that might be worth listing. So this is this is Mark Urex, Urex Silver Plate Company. Urex Associated Silver Plate. Go. Now the problem with the Rx is that they didn't they didn't plate these pieces that thickly. And this is kind of what I was saying well about earlier. A lot of the Urex pieces that are still that still exist are in poor condition and the the plate has worn through. There's only a little bit right here. You would see that's a dis defect of the plating. Other than that, this is in great shape. The other problem with Urex is that she's so clingy and just won't leave me alone. I've tried to sell Urex before, but it doesn't go for very high. This is a Master Butter Knife, Butter Spreader, Butter Knife by Rogers and Bro A1. I don't know the pattern here. Don't know the pattern here, but that's okay. I could find out if I wanted to. You go to replacements.com and take a picture of the piece and then upload it to their pattern finder. It's amazing. I cannot stress enough how, how amazing that yeah, resource is if you want to do this. And you've got another W WM Rogers piece, another Master Butter Butter Spreader. This pattern, I don't know what it is either. Could find out if we wanted to. Alright, so here the remainder here oh, there's another little knife. Okay, that makes six Six of these Argyle pieces definitely worth listing as its own. Make you some listing for that. Okay, so to show you all the rest of the silver uh, flatware, I do imagine that th this is all coin silver left in the box. We'll have to look at the ladle and see because the ladle is amazing. And I don't know what the hell is up with it. I'll go take a look at it first, actually. Okay, so this is a modern punch ladle. There's a there's a sticker made in China, but it is damn nice. This ladle is definitely worth something because it's just beautiful. And I would love to get $15, $20 for a piece like this because it's badass. Made in China. Hey, that's okay. I don't 
look for pieces made in China, but if I do find them and they're in this and they look like this, how the heck am I going to complain about it? So, ladle done. <laughs> You all hear how sharp, and, how sharp and crisp that clinking sound is? Yeah, that's how real silver is. It's really beautiful. Here we have what I do expect to be coin silver. Um, oh man. Well, there's another one of those butter knives in there. I missed it. There makes five for that pattern, so at least I can list it on its own. Okay, so. All of this is probably, most likely, silver. Let's go to my yield here first. We're looking at 164 grams. Around 100 bucks. Let's go see what... Okay, so this one's marked pure coin in the back. WMR Durgan. WMR Durgan. See, the funny thing about, per about coin silver is that even though it was made hundreds, 150 years ago, and it is, it also says pure coin, something Durgan. Even though that these are legitimate American pe made pieces, they made quite a bit, so it doesn't, it doesn't seem like the, the market is out there yet for, um, for pure coin silver. Especially these pieces, they seem to be kind of, um, I don't want to complain because I found found silver, real silver, in these boxes, but they're really thin. Look at that; they're breaking, bent up, and dented, and all that. Not, I don't think that there's a collector market for it. It'll probably just sell for melt. William B. Durgan was well known, and uh, they actually do sell for a premium. This piece, although it's not marked. I'm fairly confident that it is again coin silver, despite the way it feels, how the way it looks. If you feel it, you will see the difference for sure. This one is marked D D P D D R O something. I don't know. Hard to make out that marking right there, and it's these symbols are very interesting as well. I don't know what the, to quite make of, out of them. Hmm. It's marked S. And then you've got like an asterisk. I don't think they would have used an asterisk the way we do now these days. Would have had to mean something else back then. And then another symbol that I have no idea what to make out of it. Again, it's most likely that this is a real silver coin as well. Again, another piece. This is pure coin. Pure coin. Now this one, all it says is silver on the back. We can make it out. Interesting. Maybe it did say coin right here, and that's been faded away. And this one very beautiful piece and it is straight up marked sterling near the bull. We add these pieces together I bet you have got 200 grams. Well they won't wait 84 just by themselves. Okay, so 242 Around eight ounces. I mean, who can, who can complain about that? 